right guys what is growing on so it's about a week after new year's finally getting back over here for another follow-up with jim i was here just a couple days ago with justin rhodes got to follow up with him and this place is going off right now it's golden hour i think i got you some epic drone footage hold tight let's see what's growing on there he is what time is it oh. ah cutting time cutting time getting ready for tomorrow's market yeah yeah no, it's really nice. So I don't even have to wash this because of the mulch. So if I pick it now, it's dry and it's perfectly clean. And because you put it in a bag dry like this, people tell me five weeks in a bag. It's incredible. It's, it's so clean. It's that long in the yeah. fridge. You know, you wash it and it changes everything. It makes it last less. But if you can pick it or cut it um, when it's dry like this and don't wash it, it, it lasts forever. Pizza Greg once told me he had some last eight weeks for him. It's incredible. In his walk-in. That is, you know, for somebody buying it, that's just so valuable. Talk about shelf life. Wow. Yeah, again, nutrient density. But we can walk around and look at the garden. Oh. I can do this with a headlight. Got some more exciting stuff to talk about, huh? Yeah, well, I guess. Things are happening. Look at this place, Jim. Yeah, because I was looking at that last video you put out and it was pretty small. Real small. Yeah. What are you feeding this stuff? Mmm, goodness. Goodness. You know, really. Compost tea? <laughs> these are pretty incredible things, these plants. They eat sunlight and turn it into food. I mean, sounds like a science fiction movie, doesn't it? It does. But they do it. <clears throat> so, yeah, things are rocking pretty good. You know, I still, you know, so I do get issues. This happens about every other year. I don't know what it is. It happens in Chinese broccoli. Doesn't really affect the yield so much, but every uh, other year. Seems like it. Like last year was none. It was so good, but you know, I still get, you know, that awesome Chinese broccoli. That's still one of my favorites. Do you normally sell the leaf? No, I never sell the leaf. Okay, so it's no big deal anyway. No, but you'd think it would affect the production, but it doesn't seem to. Hmm. And the nap is rocking. We'll see about the carrots, because I did the twelve row plant, do you remember? I mean, it's over there. It just ain't sizing up yet, but they're, you know, it's probably a poor choice. They don't get much sunlight there. Well, think about this. So look at the difference between full sun. Look at those sunflowers, right? So they get sun all day, south face. And then you come around the corner and they get a little here, here, and then it just drops off. It's like that afternoon. And they're planted the same, yeah. you know, and those, they get it. So it, it does make a difference. You know, a lot of times, you know, six hours you'd think it'd be fine, but it makes a difference. Started to dig the um, green garlic now. So that was the first time I pulled that because I like to let that go until the clove starts to drop. So that's new crop this week. I did some thinning for the beet greens this week. Had Chinese broccoli. And this lettuce is holding up a lot longer um, just because of how I'm dealing with it. Because, you know, I'm just cutting the outside like four or five leaves and you just get like perpetual production. All year. Well, I mean, you know, a long time. When you think about, I don't know, how is it when them guys do those 30 inch beds and they go through with a little tilter or whatever that thing? I mean, they get, are they done or do they get a second cut? I think they get a second cut. Okay. Yeah. But think about it. So the difference between, you know, this leaf weight wise and the baby, right? So I'll go through here. So I went through today and well, this week I went through I went through this whole garden, which is still here. I can harvest again tomorrow if I wanted to, and got 120 bags. And so that's got to be at least 75 pounds, right? Of you know the you know the teenage leaves too. So they got crunch, you know here snap. Oh yeah. You know, and I just don't you know I guess you know people got used to hitting you know they always want these little teeny baby leaves that don't have much crunch but i mean there's yeah. no weight to them and you know but anyway so i'm getting a niche here and i'm continually harvesting so using that little space i've got and multiplying it you know quite a bit so napa cabbage is starting to head up so that one will be probably ready next week wow mm -hmm. and i'm starting to replant quicker so again i'm trying to like double production again so that went to that was all turnips and um bok choy right and now i replanted with these red turnips to see so i'll get a second crop out of the same bout and i'll probably get a third crop before the sweet potatoes go in because that's only like 50 days there 
But I am already planting my last planting of the year. That was what I was seeding out in there. Is that Napa cabbage again? Yeah, that's Napa cabbage. That was um, joy choy, bok choy, and snow crown, which is really quick. I, you know, so it's heading up a lot quicker than the broccoli. broccoli last, last set of blocks for the year? Yeah, well, there'll be some, but the big stuff. So these okay. are starting to head up. So, can oh, you see the that cauliflowers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you know, they're ahead of the broccoli. They won't be huge like last year. You're probably looking at six inch heads. I can tell by the size of the leaves, but still, I mean, that's a nice head. You know, I'm starting to plan enough so that, you know, I can meet my CSA so everybody will, will get one this week or probably next week because they'll get the Napa next week. Um, and beets are doing good again. Kind of underplanted the kale. I don't know what. Sometimes you just have brain farts, you know, and you go, wow, because, I mean, I can sell. I could sell 40 bunches this week and I can only get like 10, so. Could he use more kale? Wow. Live and learn. Okay. Live and learn. But you can always, see, that's the thing. People always get their garden in and think they're done. I mean, I'm going until March. I'll still be planting like huckerize and all that stuff, you know, beets. Um, yeah, these are starting to <coughs> be some golden beets there pretty quick. I feel like this year's moving extra quick, Jim. We're just getting older, is. Pete. This is true. <laughs> We're just getting Not older. Not getting any younger. No. <laughs> but yeah, so this, you know, this is a mature planting. And then this is all when so here's what it looked like last time I was here. Right. And this went in like ten days ago. Right there in the corners, ten days? Yeah, this all. <laughs> nah, maybe fourteen. That's impressive. Yeah, because those went in like four days ago. See way back there? In the very back. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean look at it. I mean they've already tripled in size in four or five days. What about the center island? When did you plant this? Same time, four or five days ago. Okay. And I continue to plant the carrots, so there's a carrot bed there, 12 row. Let me see if it goes better with more sun out here. Um, and I still have got that to plant, so that's what I'm seeding up for now. But there's a lot of food right there, isn't there, Peach? Look at that. serious. You kind of forget when you're here and it's all bare after sweet potatoes come out. And then you put these little things in and they just go whoomp. Seriously, I mean, you can see soil now, and in a couple weeks, you're not going to see anything. No, you come back. You come back in four weeks, and this will all be planted and rocking. Driveway looks a little roughed up, Jim. Oh, you missed it. I missed it. I had a tiller. A tiller. I'm not a no-till farmer anymore. Oh. I till the hardscapes. What? Yeah. You want to tell us a little bit more to your method, to your madness there? Well, I mean, so I've been. I used to do this by hand. You know, take a hoe. Because especially before I started doing the weed block during the uh, summer. But, you know, all the shells get pushed down into the sugar sand, right? And they kind of compress and then the weeds come up. But so I rented a tiller today, spent 50 bucks for, it took me two hours. I rode a tiller, it brings up all the shell and then the fine sugar sand will fall through the shell and then when it gets washed and it'll look like it's almost brand new shell. Um, I'll probably top it with just a little because it's been 10 years since I laid, oh no. It's got to be 14 years since I laid this. So just by covering it, it's because you know in a landscape it ain't gonna last that long. When was the last time you used a gas-powered machine out here? Mm -hmm. You know, we used a chainsaw to cut that tree down. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's the only gas-powered thing I use, and I used used to live around them: weed eaters, lawnmowers, edgers. Oh man, I dumped the tiller in the car. It spilled gas. I hate gas. I that's why I like hand tools. <laughs> You don't sound like you had too much fun doing that. No, but I did get a little of that feeling, you know, the, the He-Man kind of, ooh, I can do this. It's a bad place to be. It's a bad place to be. You gotta culture that feminine side. It's much better for everything. Tomatoes already getting tomatoes. Oh, over there, yeah. Over here too. Oh yeah, there's some more. Where's the yellow one? Oh, there was a red one. Oh, I touched it and it one. fell. Oh, okay. It's gone now. It might have okay. ended up in my stomach. Sorry. There we go. Yeah, there. I mean, that's good. gonna be a good tomato year because I took the chance and um, yeah, we're not looking at any big frost for a while, so I'll, you know, probably get three or four hundred pounds of tomatoes and that's all gravy. Already into January, no signs of frost. Wow. No, that's maybe the new wave of the future, but okay. uh, who knows? We'll see. It's worth a gamble, but I'm not gonna cover. I'm not gonna stress myself out. I've learned. Better just not to stress. Just let nature take its course. It's a little colder up in Maine, huh? <laughs> they just had 14 inches of snow with 30 mile an hour winds. 
Kind of like a blizzard. How's that greenhouse? Are they trying to keep anything going? She's eating spinach and carrots out of it still. Wow. It's pretty amazing. It is. I'm going to plant a lot more spinach for her next year and more carrots. Carrots have been awesome, really sweet. Take the cold grape, yeah. Yeah, when it got, because they had like, I think three the other morning, and she said the ground was froze. It was hard to get the carrots out. So three degrees. Went in on a greenhouse too, so. Oh, I love Florida. <laughs> yeah, we complain when it's 50. It was 40 this morning and I was freezing. I can't imagine being in Maine. Yeah. No, I'm really pleased with the year this year. Um, you know, most of the, you know, I tweak it a little bit every time and I see little different things. You know, I'm starting to see how the pill bugs, it's amazing how, see how they're, they're eating this one? Cause it's touching the ground, see it? Right? Okay. So again, I've got something that, you know, most people will have, if you think about it, you try to clean them dead leaves off, the critters do it, you know? And, but they're not eating the fresh stuff cause I think the bricks is up. So, you know, I'm also thinking about, you know, sometimes some of the, you know, on the lettuces, the leaves are kind of, uh, you know, discolored, so I won't use them. Cause usually when you pull ahead, you'll knock all those off anyway. <coughs> but like this one, so if I was, you know, I wouldn't want to put that in greens mix, but I'm chopping, dropping that. <laughs> Think about it, chop right? And drop chop and drop, <laughs> right there. Chop and drop in the market garden. Right? Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Oh, wow. These are already had. So that's that happy rich. That's my favorite Chinese broccoli. So I'll need to cut that and then I'll get multiple shoots, but they're much thicker than the, um, where's the Suho? I guess there ain't none here. The Suho is a little thin, but I'm saving, oh no, I hope it didn't disappear. Oh, there it is, see it? I'm, oh, you got an avocado hiding been, in here, Jim? I'm saving it for Yamaya. Oh, I thought I only had one, but I found one the right here. So, when are they coming? They're not, I might be going up there. Going up again? I'm gonna go like a Sunday through Thursday, and then just miss, no, I'm gonna go, Thursday through Sunday and just miss a Friday market and that's all I have to miss. And it's like 70 bucks each way. Just mean you're smuggling an avocado? Yeah, and then I'll bring back some tea and tinctures and all that good stuff. Okay. These god dang weeds. <laughs> what did I hear you call them? Weeds. Weeds. Can't get rid of them. Those are some pretty weeds. Can't get rid of them. Good problem to have. Yeah. Sending them out every year, huh? Yeah. It's amazing how they're just pretty tough. Things want to grow. Yeah, that's that Suho. See the thin one over there? Oh, with the white flower? Yeah. Yeah. You know, just a different stem. But these are, so I've already got a good cut off this, so they're earlier than um, Happy Rich. Because Happy Rich is over there. I just started cutting that. So you probably get 10 days earlier on the Suho. Pretty. Yeah, and tasty. Sweetest broccoli I've ever had. Dang, Jim. All right, so when are we heading home this year? Heading back to Maine. Uh, it'd probably be still first week of May. First week of May, okay. But I'm going up in for maple syrup season for a full week, get the greenhouses ready, and try to get some, I'm gonna do more potatoes. That worked out really good. So I had new- twice more this year? Maybe three. Maybe three. I don't get freaking fly well, my, now, huh? I know, I'm very red, about ready to buy their MasterCard because I get something, but anyway. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's just to be disconnected for that long is kind of tough. You know, the little girl's growing up, she's three and a half already, so. Gotta get there, I mean. Get that, pictures don't do justice. No, and it's just, you know, it's twice as expensive for them to fly down, plus the stress, and plus they don't like it, so I think Yamaya likes it, but Mama don't. But, I get it. Yeah, it's noisy here. I don't hear it, but you know. It's been quiet since we've been here today. No, no sirens. No right. sirens. No you know. sirens. Oh. Uh oh. All right, Jim, we're running out of daylight. What kind of exciting stuff we got going on well, this year? Well, you can come back in the headlight, and then it's fun. So you walk out here, and there's all these little eyes when the headlight's out because all these little spiders, their eyes glow. <laughs> it's so cool. And then you see different things in the night because you kind of focus you. Yeah. That's your pest control, huh? Yeah. But, okay. um,. Yeah, I guess, you know, I'm just 
trying to get the space just keep using that sunlight space with the incredible fertility and I think he can I can keep pushing it that's why I'm still doing this because I think we haven't even tapped the potential of what's possible on fertile soils just because we're so tuned into this is the way to do it you know and if you don't step outside that you'll just continue to get those same results um, and that's what nature does to an, you know it's if evolution is just a bunch of new stuff all the time and what works works and then you know usually it continues to work but as things change then something else has to change so um, I just I think I might be able to double production again this year maybe not in sales but actual poundage which I can't keep track of I saw where that who's that guy did you see where he did that <laughs> it was yeah. incredible what was his name um, ah Kenny yes yeah yeah, that's, that's pretty awesome. incredible, yeah. But I'm trying more spinaches this year. I found, you know, this one's a little ragged because I've been harvesting hard, but this is really nice to go on the greens and mix. Is that a different type of chard or something? No, that's actually a spinach. What? Yeah, taste it, it's salty too. Um, so wow. that one's called Red Tabby. Oh my gosh. Hmm. Good though. Yeah. And then... I found another one that's a little more elongated called Beaujolais. And then this one I don't like, which is Red Snapper. It's just kind of, it's more pointy. Similar, you know, similar, but it's just not as nice. It seems the harder, but then the Beaujolais. As it's chasing? Yeah. Okay. It's more hard, but the Beaujolais is like a cross between the two. See how it's bigger? Mm. So I just planted like 60 of those to put in. Now cilantro is growing for me. I've never been able to grow cilantro. It's going good. First year? Yeah, usually it always bolts on me whenever I get it. But usually I was getting plants from somebody else. And I'm starting my own seeds now, so maybe that's the difference. Probably has a lot to do with the soil. Probably. It's been a hot summer or hot winter, you know. It's not like it's been cold. Mm -hmm. So I'm still interplanting, mm. which is working pretty good. So here I mixed in with the collards. Uh, wow. <laughs> wow. I'll let that go another, you know, I got about 20 of those in, but so pull them out right as the collards are coming on, because I think that's only probably 35 days to that size. I think that one's called Summer Cross. I like that better than the other ones. The other ones are always greener and not as long. I don't think you need the tops, or if you do, you gotta cook them. He's a monster. Yeah, I mean, I've had them as big as my arm. I'm gonna let some of those go like that. But. You need a digger to get them up, Jim. Per near. Well, yeah, that was actually in the sugar sand. It's funny, it was, when Justin was here, I dug down the sugar sand and it seems like it's getting deeper. The sugar sand is. I mean, I think it's further away. Right, because it's getting okay. darker and darker at yeah, the yeah. top layer. So. That's good to hear. Cool. All right, well, thank you for the follow up. We'll be back in a couple weeks. Hopefully. Come back in about four and it'll be good. Four weeks it is? Yeah, it'll be rocking. Thank you, Jim. Anytime. All right, so that's a wrap. We're going to let Jim get back to work. This place is looking unreal lush. It's literally, I mean, just glowing out here. Golden hour, I think I got you guys some epic footage. Hope you enjoyed this quick follow-up video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, maybe go ahead and do so. Be sure to pound that bell to stay notified. And just know, if you wanna know more about what Jim does, if you wanna do this on your own, we have a masterclass with Jim that's always in the description of his videos. So most importantly, get out there and pound dirt.